Good morning, welcome to Seattle Community Church Online Worship. My name is Pastor Brenna, and I want to offer you a special welcome if this is your first morning joining us. As we continue in our season of Lent, we still have a number of ways for you to connect to one another and to God. The first is our book club will meet on March 26th at 7.30 p.m. on Google Meets. They are reading The Heart's Invisible Furies. If you are interested in joining them, you can email ministry at seattlechurch.org to get that login link. The second way is that we invite you to join us for Good Friday, a chance for us to come together online and worship the God who would go to the cross for you and for me. It'll be 7.30 p.m. on YouTube premiere, so make sure that you check that out and join us for that evening. And finally, if you are a family, Teacher Esther is doing some amazing things for Easter to celebrate with you and your children. Make sure you check out the announcements from the past few weeks to find out exactly what those are, or email her at childrens at seattlechurch.org so that she can make sure to get you plugged in to the amazing things that she has planned for that weekend. Friends, let us lift our hearts to God as we worship the one who goes to the cross for you and for me. Welcome to Seattle Community Church. My name is Jay. Uh, Welcome to this time of praise with Gene and Edward. Please join with me as we glorify our God. Here we go. From the highest throne to the earth below, you laid down your life for the likes of us. Great is the love of the Savior. From a wounded heart to a life made whole, every human heart will declare as one. Great is the love of the Savior. Lord of endless light, let your glory shine forever all the earth. rising from the rising sun to the still of night every waking moment for your delight jesus we live for your glory lord of endless light let your glory shine forever all the earth all the earth sing your praise God be exalted, God be exalted in everything. We live for your glory, live for your glory. Lord of endless life, Lord of endless life, let your glory shine forever. All the earth, all the earth, sing your praise. Amen. 
We glorify God in everything that we do. And now take this time to pass the peace with one another. Hi, I'm Jean Choi, and I invite you to join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift up our praise and prayer to you. Thank you for being our God. It gives us such peace and joy and hope when we can lean on you for guidance, knowing that you are in control. In times of uncertainty, we especially thank you for the blessings that are manifested in so many ways. Help us to see your glory in our daily lives as we listen to your words. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this, uh, this morning. I hope wherever you are, that you are doing well and that you are staying safe. Today is the fifth Sunday in the season of Lent, and I hope that you have been able to participate in this season of repentance and making room for God in your life. And if you haven't been able to do that, I want to encourage you and I invite you for the next two weeks to practice some of these spiritual disciplines and to help us in this season of Lent. We have been looking at passages that have challenged us to reflect on our own relationship with Jesus and to think about where we put Jesus in our life. And today, we are going to look at another passage from the Gospel of John where Jesus talks about life, death, and what it means for him to be glorified. And what does it mean for us to glorify Jesus in our life. If you're ready, listen for the word of the Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come, for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. In today's story, it's Passover time, and literally hundreds of thousands of people are gathering in Jerusalem. And just to help us remember, Passover is a time of remembering how God passed over the Israelite people during the last plague in Egypt. And it's about celebrating how God had saved and delivered his people, not only in the past, but also about how God will deliver them and save them in the future. Now, it's in the midst of this chaotic scene that Jesus comes into Jerusalem. Now, the people in Jerusalem that have gathered there, they've been hearing about Jesus and what he had been doing, how Jesus had been turning water into wine and healing the sick and feeding thousands and thousands of people and raising even, even raising people from the dead. And people are shocked, and they want to see this Jesus. A great crowd comes out to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. 
People are shouting, Hosanna, which means save, I pray, save us, we pray. People are waving palm branches and spreading them on the road, taking off their clothes and throwing it on the road so that Jesus could come into the city on top of it. They are literally throwing Jesus a poor man's parade. Many people had been hearing about Jesus, but most of them had not seen Jesus yet. And now's their chance to finally see him in person. Keep in mind that it's not only Jews that are gathering in Jerusalem. In fact, many people from all over the world, other cultures, other ethnic groups, they also came to celebrate the festival of the Passover. And among them, some of them were Greeks. And somehow, some, some of these Greeks run into Philip and sense a Greek connection with him. And if you have traveled internationally, you know what I'm talking about. When you run into somebody from the United States and you sense a connection, you sense that they are also from the United States, whether it's hearing them talk in English or maybe it's just the way they're dressed. And believe it or not, you know, us Americans, we have a certain way that we dress that's not really noticeable until you go into another country. Whatever it is, something tells these Greeks that there is a connection, a Greek connection with Philip. And they approach him and they ask him if he could help them to meet this Jesus. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I think that's, that was a pretty common response that people had about Jesus. They want to see him, right? See what he's about. And throughout Jesus' ministry, people have always been coming around Jesus for a dinner and a show. Watch Jesus heal some sick people. Listen to some stories that he tells because he's such a great storyteller. And then get some bread and fish what I like to call fish and chips. So some of the Greeks, they want to see Jesus. So Philip and Andrew go to Jesus and tell him, Jesus, there are some Greeks here, and they want to see you. They look pretty important. Maybe you should check them out. Jesus takes this opportunity to do some teaching, and Jesus tells them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. What do you think Jesus is trying to teach them by saying this? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. How do you glorify Jesus in your life? When Jesus says this, I don't know if the disciples or the Greeks understand what Jesus is talking about. They're probably just thinking, the Son of Man is to be glorified. Well, it's Passover celebration. We heard what Jesus can do. So maybe Jesus is saying, it's party time. It's time to celebrate. We don't know what they're thinking. In fact, I would say that the people who have heard this have actually no clue what Jesus is talking about. Because they have already put Jesus into a certain box, a box of their preconceived desires and expectations that they have of Jesus. What do they want from Jesus? I think a lot of them want, once again, a dinner and a show. They want to see some healing. They want to see some miracles. And they want to be fed. They want to be fed until they are full, just like what they've been hearing in all the stories, all the rumors about Jesus that have been going around. They want some good fish and chips that they've been hearing about. What else are they expecting from Jesus? Well, if he's got all these powers, 
they probably want him to overthrow the Roman Empire. They want him to free them from the bondage of the Roman Empire. Maybe Jesus has a large group of people that could rival the Roman Empire's army. When Jesus says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus isn't saying this because he wants to be recognized and honored by other people. But because Jesus wants people, especially the followers of Jesus, to really see him. Because glory is not about empty praise. It's not about a person who goes around telling people that they love Jesus, but when Jesus asks them to do something, all of a sudden, they don't have any time for Jesus. All of a sudden, faith is about what you have on the inside and not about how you live your life on the outside. You see, glory is not about empty praise, but it's about seeing and honoring the true nature of Jesus, about who he truly is, about what he is truly about. What Jesus is saying is that as people are wanting to see Jesus, like the Greeks, the time has come for him, Jesus, to be seen and honored for who he truly is and what he is truly about. Question for all of you to think about. Who do you think Jesus truly is? And what do you think Jesus is all about? Jesus tries to tell all these people that are following him what he is truly about. He tries to make it easy by talking about it in terms that they should all understand. Farming. He tells them this. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Through this analogy, Jesus is trying to tell them that he is going to suffer and die, so that others may be forgiven and be able to live, have life. This is the true nature of who Jesus is and what he is about. In Jesus' mind, we cannot separate the idea of a loving God and the cross. Those two things are tied together and cannot be separated in Jesus' life and in ours. So when people come and want to see Jesus in all of his glory, Jesus is letting them know, my glory is not about celebration. My glory is about the cross. And there is no avoiding it. This isn't something easy, so Jesus just kind of says it. Jesus himself struggles with this understanding. And that's why Jesus says in the passage that we read, my soul is troubled. I am troubled by the thought of this. John 12, 26 says, whoever serves me must follow me. These are the words of Jesus. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Think about that for a moment. People like being with Jesus when he did miracles. People like being with Jesus when he was feeding thousands and thousands of people. That people can handle. But is he also saying that as he is going to the cross, that his followers must also Go there too? Is that what Jesus is saying? If you are not shaken to the core by that thought, you are either better than Jesus or 
you are not thinking deep enough about what it means to follow Jesus. This is actually a very scary thought. As I said, even Jesus was troubled by it. But Jesus is clear. In Luke 9, 23, he says this. Then he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? This is how we are to see Jesus. This is how we are to see ourselves. As Jesus and as his followers, what we are about is revealing the heart of God to the world. So I ask you, how are you revealing the heart of God to the world? Some things that come to my mind are that we are called to be loving, to be forgiving, to carry the burdens of others, to care for the poor, and to feed the hungry. But all of these things take sacrifice. They take sacrifice on your part. Without sacrifice, there is no loving. Without sacrifice, there is no forgiving. Without sacrifice, there is no carrying the burdens of others. There is no caring for the poor. Without sacrifice, there is no feeding of the hungry. All of these things that bring life to others takes sacrifice. I know this is a real tough message, but we are deep into the season of Lent, and we need to think seriously about our relationship with Jesus. The hour has come for us to truly see Jesus as he is and to see what he is really about. And we need to think seriously about our calling to see Jesus as he is in our life and whether in seeing that we will still follow him. Whether it is not only to the banqueting table, which we love, but will we also follow him to the cross? We can see the truth that sacrifice and life are tied together and cannot be separated, whether it is in the physical life or in the spiritual life. This is true. We see it in the example that Jesus gives of the grain of wheat that must die in order for there to be much fruit and in order for there to be a great harvest. We see how sacrifice and life are tied together in the life cycle of salmon that we have here in the Northwest. How salmon swim and live in the ocean, but once a year swim miles and miles from the ocean up the river where they spawn and lay their eggs and the salmon then die so that there can be life more salmon. We see how Jesus ties together the physical life and the spiritual life together that those two cannot be separated. That one impacts the other. When Jesus says this, those who love their life lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. I think St. Francis of Assisi knew this when he wrote this prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, 
to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. In our season of Lent, I invite you to struggle and to see the real Jesus and what it means to follow him in your life. I encourage you and I pray that through your life and through your sacrifices that others may come to know the depth of God's love for them and that through you that our world will be changed and made more like the kingdom of God. Will you have a word of prayer with me? Gracious and loving God, we lift up our prayer and we ask that you, you will work through each and every person in our congregation, wherever they may be. Use them in a way that your spirit will make your love known to the people around them. And I pray that it is through your people that your kingdom may grow and be known in our world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, it's time for our offering. So wherever you are, we invite you to give faithfully. Thank you, Pastor, for the message. And now, may we humble ourselves just as Christ has humbled himself, sacrificing for our sins.
Blessing from our elder. Hello, my name is Andrew Hungbo, and I'm an elder at SCC. I can't believe it's been a year since the initial shutdown. I know that we're all going through difficulties, whether it's illness or losses, but we've also celebrated birthdays and anniversaries. In this difficult time, please lean on God and on each other as we continue this journey forward. Now let's bow our heads for the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week.